what is up YouTube in today's video uh, I'm gonna talk about rather an intriguing topic uh, which is really popular in the last uh, few months uh, NFTs uh, non-fungible tokens um, pretty impressive how it's being adopted with a lot of people or artists uh, I'm gonna co cover what exactly an NFT is in this video and what technology is kind of backing it and um, uh, a lot of other factors like how it is like kind of revolutionized uh, uh, how people own art like which is like digital art how people are trying to own it and uh, let's cover topics and also compare it to what existing uh, technology uh, like compared to like cryptocurrencies how uh, nft is and uh, how it looks like and uh, even for me this is a very uh, interesting topic i have a lot of ideas in terms of uh, building things around it because uh, it opens up a lot more things uh, in terms of collectibles, art, etc. So maybe in the future I'm going to cover a lot more topics. But um, let's start with the basics first in this video. Let's cover a few small things step by step. And uh, let's try to understand uh, what exactly an NFT is. Alright, uh, if you're going to try to search for hashtag NFTs, you're going to see uh, millions of them out there. People are talking about it continuously. People are very curious, uh, very intrigued by the idea of collectibles and uh, uh, owning those collectibles even though it kind of exists already owning uh, images uh, digital art but uh, initially for me as this was very confusing and why people are doing it but now uh, I, when I've like further looked down and uh, in research on it a bit more I kind of understand it I kind of understand where this is going the direction it is going uh, pretty impressive to see so let's try to cover the basics, which is, let's go for the definition, which is like, what is an NFT? So NFT is a short form of non-fungible token. So basically it means uh, within the blockchain, uh, there's like a fungible token, and then there's the next thing, which is non-fungible token. The fungible tokens are the coin, and the non-fungible fungible tokens are uh, anything apart from a coin. Like fungible kind of holds a value. A $5 coin will always hold a $5 value, but uh, a non-fungible token is actually doesn't hold a value. Uh, it can have anything, it can be anything associated to it, it's just an item across a blockchain. Uh, let's look at uh, the technology that backs these non-fungible tokens, which is primarily a blockchain called Ethereum. To further understand the Ethereum blockchain, uh, one of the best uh, website to is to see etherscan.io. So basically, if you understand the concept, uh, like this is just a data being registered and uh, cannot be manipulated by anyone in the world, anyone, like a single person in the world. It has to be proved by a lot, a lot of the nodes inside of the blockchain. So then it kind of concretely, concretely builds this ledger of transaction happening in the world. So you can just go there. If you make a transaction, like you can search for your transaction, you will definitely see it there in etherscan.io. If you have an address, if you have a wallet, search for that wallet and it, it kind of shows it there. So for example, uh, it's already showing the latest transaction happening in almost near real time. Let's just look at one of the transaction which uh, occurred uh, basically, it has a transaction hash, which is you can treat it as like an uh, ID for the transaction, a uh, unique ID for the transaction. So you can see it like a database uh, from being from an engineering background, how the data is being stored, which has like information on the status of the transaction happened, the block, which uh, the, the, the transaction got registered, which is like a concept uh, of the underlying technology of blockchain. The timestamp, the from and the to address is like a hash, but basically it says like uh, the transaction happen, happened from person A, which had this address. Uh, the address is like a wallet and it went to this one uh, which is uh, like another wallet and um, the token transferred was uh, a USDT so basically that's uh, that's the way I, I, I was trying to explain uh, Ethereum being a blockchain which allows programmable blockchain called uh, smart contracts uh, it allows multiple currencies to exist so basically this is also like an ERC20 token uh, a fungible token a USDT and uh, it's being transferred from like A to B and being registered on the blockchain. So the idea is this network of database is accessible to the to anyone in the world and uh, you can no one can compromise this database. This kind of uh, data represents transfer of either a coin, ERC20 token or, or an NFT which is like another token and you can create your own tokens and uh, that's 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 has given rise to dApps. Um, moving on uh, in this video, I, I, I'm going to cover uh, actually buying my first NFT. I haven't bought an NFT. I was just waiting, waiting to make a video 
on this. Uh, two reasons. I, it took me some time to make the video and the next, the, the gas prices was high previously, but now I think they've uh, gone down a bit. But uh, let's try to understand uh, different types of NFTs out there. And the best place to start with is uh, OpenSea. So OpenSea is a platform uh, which is like a marketplace where anyone can just create an account and buy, go there and buy or like even see different types, uh, different types of NFTs. All of these different NFTs being minted and you can just go there for buy for a price. A lot of them are also for free. Basically these items, you can see it as images, right? Uh, anyone can just go there and download these download to your computer and use them, uh, print it out. But the idea is uh, what people are trying to do is trying to sell this to someone. So what I can go, I can click on this and buy this. So basically what will happen, the transaction of transfer of, of like where the, this, oops, this person sells this to me is kind of registered on the blockchain, which is Ethereum blockchain. And you can actually go there and see the transaction that happened to, to, to show the legitimacy of uh, me buying this product so it kind of uh, it is uh, like uh, fulfills all of all the concept of verifying things because like even in the like previous to nfts existing people were still buying art right but then there was always like a central party which kind of uh, verified uh, in terms of the originality of the the art piece you're trying to buy like especially especially for the, the expensive ones so that's where uh, this kind of solves that problem where the transfer of ownership or the, the, the tra transaction is kind of being registered in the public blockchain and then uh, people can just tag their names associated to it. So for art pieces, I don't understand it as much, I would say, because uh, for me, uh, the best use case would be trading cards, right? I, I was really fond of collecting Pokemon cards and owning Pokemon cards. Uh, I had a big collection I traded a few, stole a few. So basically then it makes sense for me trying to understand it via cards. So uh, if you are a collector of cards, uh, then and if all of this legitimacy of you buying some stuff, even though it's digital, even though it's just an image, but uh, it kind of holds a value, uh, personal value for me, at least if I'm trying to collect cards. So if you go to Sorare, this is fairly new uh, web uh, uh, blockchain dApp, I would say, which kind of allows you uh, which is kind of minting these uh, uh, foot, uh, football player cards and uh, allowing people to buy these. So basically, then you can buy these color, these uh, trading cards online, all digital though, but uh, kind of have an ownership. Then once you have this collection, then it kind of builds a value of its own because it's like mostly supply and demand. If you find some other collector out there who's quite interested in getting these, and then you can get a high value of... Uh, uh, this so that's how it uh, kind of uh, I kind of understand this now because collecting trading cards online would be a big thing already and then like uh, uh, Famous footballers are out there and you can just uh, collect them and then like being rare or not rare because these guys are minting it And kind of holds the value But it, the only or the value is always derived by the supply and demand if the demand is high uh, if things are scarce and it uh, it has some kind of brand value, then people would love to buy something like this. So pretty interesting. Uh, a few more things uh, would be uh, one of the famous uh, uh, sale and purchase was from Beeple. Beeple is this uh, digital artist uh, who's kind of selling his art uh, sp specifically through OpenSea. And then you can just go there and collect uh, his art uh, online so so even though you can just go to this guy's instagram page and download this jpeg but the transfer of ownership from this guy because he's already super popular and someone actually bought it for like 70 million uh pretty impressive uh sometimes it blows my mind as well just before i move ahead and buy my first nft i would i would like to mention that if you got value out of this video and if you like this video definitely hit the like button it helps with the algorithm and uh, it would really help if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, it kind of helps with the algorithm further with more subscribers. So yeah, that's it. And uh, let's move forward on trying to buy the first NFT ever for me at least. And uh, OpenSea already has a very good guide. I would definitely recommend checking out the blog on OpenSea. It has all these different guides, the NFT Bible, and also the guide on buying the first your first NFT token. 
So as you can see, this is a website, right? But uh, the data in this website, all, uh, all this data is, is coming from the blockchain. So even though this site is central, but uh, the data, all these uh, uh, NFTs are kind of existing as part of the distributed ledger uh, with all these, uh, these uh, tokens and all, all these uh, uh, art pieces are registered, right? So what is gonna happen is like this OpenSea platform will help me basically filter out, sort out, and look for things across uh, this blockchain in an easy way. I can go click on browse. If I want to I collect something, if I want to see something, I can click different things. Like if I just want to see art or I want to see go for trading cards. So for now, let, let's go for trading cards. And um, within this, it gives you price values uh, and different, different collections. So basically, these are different brands. Like so rare, I, I mentioned earlier, you can just select these and then you can just buy these for and it filter out these cards and you can just buy these so i i'm definitely interested in these ones but yeah right now these are a bit expensive for me to buy but uh maybe why not i'm gonna decide i'm gonna decide in this video what to buy and uh so all these different and, and you can just go there and create your own collection uh but uh yeah you can just go there anyone can do that and that hence like there's like an overload of uh, nfts being out there and you don't know what to select right so and that's where you have to decide right and that's where like a collector mindset comes in and you have to collect things you have to see which kind of holds value and which kind of holds value to you as well like for me pokemon cards was the biggest thing out there uh, uh i i was really fond of them even I, i've even like stole a few and um, so that's the idea like you have to collect things which you are specifically interest, interested in and then it kind of very similar people like you would be interested in later. So this is like not directly helping you make money. Even for now, like for some time it would, but eventually it's like a collector's thing and you want to collect something, it's out there. So you have to uh, decide wisely around it, right? And even though I don't have the like the best knowledge on what, what to choose, that's why I haven't done it now yet. So I'm going to try to decide. Uh, but for me, a, a surreal, something like a collecting card totally makes sense. Totally makes sense to buy. Maybe I'll just buy one. Uh, so yeah, let's just go with it. And uh, OpenSea already has like a big, uh, good opening documentation on, on how to get started. The only thing you would need is go go to OpenSea, select the item you would wanna have. And the idea is it relies on the trusted peer-to-peer -peer exchange, which is the Ethereum blockchain. And then the, the main thing you have to do is kind of create a wallet. Uh, so I'm using MetaMask here. Uh, so MetaMask is just a Chrome extension, which kind of acts as uh, a wallet. So if I click on here, it kind of shows up. It shows up the, the Ethereum I have and um, the account. It's showing it's basically my wallet, the public available wallet. And you can, if I can just search for my wallet, you'll see all the transaction I did in through this wallet uh, on the Ethereum blockchain. All right. Uh, I've been scanning through all of these. Um, I kind of, uh, without that much of knowledge of uh, the collector's mindset but I'm gonna go for like one of the the cheaper ones just to showcase how to buy so maybe I've decided on this uh, Korean player so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna click on it uh, yeah so there are two types of things which are happening you can either bid through this platform and then the highest bid wins or you can just like buy directly and uh, I'm directly buying from this owner called Steph 18 so right now it's just 52 bucks, but yeah, maybe in the future it has high value. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to buy now and probably keep it uh, for selling later because I can see Soray is one of the more popular uh, collectors uh, trading card out there. For so that's how it used to work uh, in, in my childhood. So maybe let's just try to buy it. So, so I just click on checkout. Then what it's going to do, is going to open my MetaMask wallet. I already have this wallet in place. So you, for you, you would need to create this wallet and once you have an address, you need to, some Ethereum there. After you have this wallet, uh, you would need to click on buy. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, the gas fee is, is like it's that high, uh, making the price super high for me at least. Uh, but like, anyways, let's just go with it. Uh, I'm going to click on confirm and try to buy this and uh, register it under my name. All right. Uh, after a few minutes, uh, the transaction is successful. So as I mentioned previously, you can always see these transaction happening publicly on Etherscan. This is just kind of taking the data out from there. 
so the transaction hash which i did like which is the transaction id the the status which is now successful earlier it was show is pending timestamp when it registered it took like five minutes which is a long time i would say i was expecting it to be like lower and then um, how the, exactly the transaction happened uh the total transaction p i fee i paid the value of bought in 0.015 ether and then now it kind of registers to uh, my account i would say uh yeah it's going to yeah finally going to my account it went from uh uh to open and then to my account then open i guess has a fee involved too so yeah so yep finally i now own my first nft all right so now <laughs> I have my first NFT under my account, which is Sialanoj. Anyone can see this in the world. And now I have the bragging rights of a Soric, Soro, Sororic card of uh, a Korean player. And uh, I bought it for 0 0.015. Now the aim is to sell it for furthermore. But yeah, I'm gonna keep you posted on my Twitter account or probably Instagram and what happens with this story. But uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Uh, so yeah, so I would say that's mostly it. Uh, I hope uh, you guys like the video. If you got value out of this, if you uh, understood uh, like how NFT works and how the Ethereum works better. And if you liked my selection, uh, definitely hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. It helps with the algorithm. So yeah, I would say thank you.